All right, hello guys, <laughs> and welcome to our national rainbow jewelry making class. Um, I am very honored to be here with you all. Um, <laughs> we'll just wait for some more people to roll in. I'll go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Deja Vu, and um, my brand is Miss My Match. I specialize in really quirky, fun, vibrant statement jewelry. Um, and I am a part of the LGBTQ plus community. I identify as queer and I am very, very, very thankful to have so much support and love in my life. Um, everyone in my life has been very uh, welcoming and accepting of my journey. So I'm very, very grateful to be here for numerous of reasons. Um, so as I mentioned today in this class, we will be making some pride themed jewelry. We will be doing the classic rainbow. Um, if you guys do not know what colors those include, um, that would be purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. I said that backwards on purpose because we're gonna work backwards today. Um, so I'll be going over some of the supplies that you guys will need in order to make these marvelous vibrant earrings. So you're going to need some polymer clay. You're gonna need some red polymer clay. This is gonna represent life. Got it written here too. <laughs> so this represents life. Um, for those who don't know, there's an artist based who was based in San Francisco named Gilbert Baker who designed the rainbow flag back in the 1970s. The original flag had a few more colors in there <laughs> that, is, that are no longer in that. Um, in that uh, classic rainbow, but this became the original classic traditional LGBTQ flag color, color, uh, color scheme, I mean. So we have red to represent life. We have orange to represent healing. We have yellow to represent the sun, green to represent nature. And then originally there was violet and also indigo, which has now been reduced to just blue. Um, and that's gonna represent art and harmony. And then we have purple, which represents spirit, okay? So as I said, we're gonna work backwards today. You'll understand why in just a moment here. Um, some more supplies you're gonna need is the flat nose, the flat nose jewelry tool, as well as the bent nose jewelry tool. These pliers are Life, cha life changers, like seriously, it's, it's way better than just using your nails to, to get some junk, jump rings to fit together. So these I highly recommend. Um, next, we have some earring hooks. You could find these at your local Michael's store as well. We have some eye pin screws. We're gonna need these to be able to attach to the jump rings and turn the whole shebang into some fabulous earrings. We have the jump rings as mentioned before. Now, um, these come in a variety of sizes, but I would recommend um, the maybe like second to third smallest size. Um, and you know, you can kind of determine on your own which, which one works better for you. An optional, um, item would be the Sculpey Bacon Bond. This is just gonna kind of help the eye pin go in a little bit easier and bake and not break. <laughs> bacon Bond, this is really, really great stuff. I highly recommend um, for any polymer clay creations. If you're gonna attach an eye pin um, or an eye screw, this is also a game changer. So I highly recommend investing in this at some point in time. And last but not least, you are going to need a clay extruder. So I have a couple of options here. We have this one. This one is more, more of like a manual uh, clay extruder, clay gun. Um, you're gonna find this one at Michael's and they're gonna come with these little attachments here. Um, it comes with a number of different ones. They have like circular ones, they have um, star shaped, square shaped, triangle shaped, you wanna go for the one that has a circle. Um, you're gonna pick the largest circle that you can find in that pack and use that as an attachment for this specific product uh, project, okay? 
And then today I will mainly be using this clay gun, which has a crank on it. Um, now Michaels has a version of this um, in store. It's a black version, super duper awesome. And it just makes the project a little bit easier and quicker. So if you can invest in one of these with a crank on the end, I highly recommend the black one from Michaels. It is super duper efficient and great for just getting the project done nice and smooth, okay? So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started. And we'll go ahead and start by opening that. Oh, actually, I forgot a step. <laughs> I forgot a step, guys. Totally forgot a step. Can we switch to this front camera real quick? Perfect, perfect. Okay, so I totally forgot a step, you guys. What you want to do is go ahead and turn your oven on and go ahead and preheat it to 275 degrees. 275, that way by the time we get to baking our polymer clay, it's already ready to go and you can just pop it in the oven. A couple of other, um, uh, a couple of other <laughs> items you'll need for that part of the project is some parchment paper and as well as a cookie sheet. I'm sure you guys have many of those laying around because you eat tons of cookies like myself. Um, so go ahead and grab a cookie sheet um, and cookie sheet, AKA parchment paper and a cookie baking pan um, and go ahead and preheat your oven to 275, okay? And then let's go ahead and switch it back over to the clay view. We're gonna start with um, our purple polymer clay. So we're gonna go ahead and get that open. If it does help, if you have some scissors around, they're just a little bit easier to cut open some time. I'd also like to mention that my pronouns are she, her. I get that question quite a bit <laughs> whenever I stream. So I'll go ahead and answer that now. Um, pronouns she, her. And again, I'm incredibly thankful to be representing the LGBTQ plus community as well as the BIPOC community. Um, as an artist, it really does mean a lot to me to be able to share things like this with you guys and to teach you how I do what I do. Um, <laughs> So thank you so much for joining everyone. I really appreciate it. So what you're gonna do is go ahead and take the clay into your hands, all right? And we're gonna do what's called conditioning. Um, now conditioning is basically softening the clay by using the oils on your hands, as well as the heat that is, you know, like caused by the friction. And it just, it softens your clay over, over time. So you're gonna take it into your palms and roll it Gonna roll it into a ball, like so. And then you're going to go ahead and rub it this way so that you create kind of like a, I guess like a hot dog kind of like link style. Just keep on rolling that, okay? We're gonna go ahead and put that aside right there. We're gonna go ahead and open our blue pack. All right, so same thing. You're gonna go ahead and roll that into a ball, condition your clay so that it softens up. Now doing this is absolutely crucial if you're going to work with a clay gun. Um, it just makes the it just makes the clay a little bit easier um, to come out of the circular attachment because it is a really tight space. And if you do skip this step, um, the clay can end up coming out very uh, cracked and dry, which we don't want, right? So there goes the blue. By the way, if you're finding that you are, you know, like getting a little bit of clay on your hands because the color is transferring, just keep a little, keep a little towel near, nearby, like just one that you use for for your scraps and stuff, just, you know, just wipe your hands off a little bit here and there. Okay, next we have green.
Okay, gonna go ahead and get some green out of there. Okay, so you're gonna take that into the palms of your hands. Go ahead and roll that into a bowl, fall, condition it. Hey, Deja, we have a question from Facebook. All right. How long does polymer clay stay soft in the package once it's open? Um, it can stay soft. Uh, I, I'd say it has a good like few months before it starts to harden, depending on um, depending on the weather <laughs> where you are currently, and you know if it's if it's warm in the room, if it's cold in the room. Typically, if it's dry and it's and it's hot, um, where you are at currently, it's going to be, you know, a much uh, shorter, you know, kind of shelf life. Um, so I highly recommend, like, if you are going to only use half a pack like this, that you just go ahead and close it on up. Okay. And then I would recommend putting this in a Ziploc bag and then storing it away in a, in a dry, cool place. Um, so that way your, your clay stays in good condition. All right. Up next we have yellow. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and roll that into a ball. This is honestly my favorite part about <laughs> working with polymer clay because you get a little palm massage. All right, so that one's good to go. Like I said, if you get a lot of like leftover bits of clay on your hand and you don't want that color to transfer into the next color that you'll be using, go ahead and use your little you know, your little dirty cloth <laughs> and uh, wipe your hands off a little bit just so that color does not transfer. Up next, we have orange. Okay. So again, you're gonna go ahead and condition that clay, fold it into a ball. And then go ahead and roll it hot dog style. You want it about the size of the clay extruder if you are using a clay extruder because it's gonna fit right into that tube. So don't make it too thick and don't make it too narrow. Okay, and then last but not least, we have red to represent life. Okay, there it is. Go ahead and roll that into a ball, condition that clay. and soften that up a little bit. And then to hot dog style. All right. So there are your six lovely colors. I'm gonna kind of sit those aside here. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to use this clay extruder if this is the one that you are using. Okay, you're gonna go ahead and unscrew that lid. Okay, and then you have this circular attachment. You're gonna go ahead and put that on top. Screw that lid back on. And then this back here, you're gonna go ahead and pull that out. Pull it out, separate it. Okay, and we're gonna start with, or I'll demonstrate, actually I'll demonstrate with this gun um, just because it's a little bit easier to use um, and just clearly see what's happening. So this one, you're gonna load your clay into that bottom. 
if you are using this one, right? And then you're gonna go ahead and take the back, push that in there, and then get a nice little grip there. And then you're gonna push that clay out and it should come out of this circular attachment here, okay? So there's that one. And then on this one, if you're using the crank, uh, the crank clay gun, you're gonna go ahead and wind that back here. We can go ahead and switch to the front view so I can show everyone how this one works. Perfect, okay. So this one, you're just gonna go ahead and crank it backwards. This twisty part should come out. And if you look inside, right, you should be able to see that it is being pulled back to make room for the clay. So go ahead and wind that back as far as you can. We're gonna go ahead and place that purple inside. Okay. And I'll show you guys an alternative. If you don't have a clay gun, that's totally fine. There's another way to do this project by just using your fingers to roll the clay out. Um, so I'll show you guys that alternative in a second. So again, you're gonna take that circular attachment, go ahead and set that on top. Get that cap twisted on top of there. And then you're gonna crank the opposite way until clay starts to come out. There goes that purple clay. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and crank that out. Let's go ahead and switch to the bird's eye view. Okay, so just crank, crank, crank. I would say crank as much as, um, as many, as, as much as you need for the amount of earrings that you're gonna make. If you're gonna make more than two pairs, you might wanna crank out a little bit more um, than this. This is more than enough for two pairs of rainbow earrings, maybe even three pairs. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here and you can simply just pinch that off like so. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this. And here is where that little rag that you don't care about, <laughs> your little uh, you know, hand wiping rag is gonna come into play here. Mine is very dirty because I use it for my hands to get all that color transfer off, wipe off my cleaning space, I mean, my, uh, my workspace, et cetera. So you're gonna want to go ahead and crank that out. Go ahead and crank that out, get that excess clay out. Okay, and I'll set this aside and see how there's just kind of like this residue left in the clay gun. You're gonna take your, your little rag and you're gonna just wipe that clay off. Polymer, polymer clay can be a little messy sometimes, but I promise you it is always worth it. <laughs> it is always, always worth it. Hey Deja, we have a yes? couple more questions for you. Okay, um, yes, do it. So one person asked if you could repeat what each color represents in the pride flag. And Absolutely. then do you do anything other than, do you do anything else other than craft jewelry making? Um, so I do, I definitely do other things other than jewelry making. I actually didn't get into jewelry making until last year. Um, last year in April was like the first time I ever even got <laughs> pliers to start making jewelry or like, I didn't even know what jump rings were, just all of it was so new to me. Um, and before that, I was a professional photographer. I've taught dance. Um, I've directed dance shows, I've choreographed. Um, and then I got into painting a couple of years ago as well. So um, I'm just a very, I'm a very artsy, artsy fartsy kind of a kind of lady. And um, I love, I love crafting in general. So, you know, starting a jewelry business and everything, it didn't seem like too wild of an idea, but because I knew absolutely nothing about it, it, <laughs> it was definitely, um, it was definitely a leap. It was definitely a leap. I knew nothing about jewelry making, but um, I, su I suppose uh, everything else considered, um, it, it wasn't too, uh, too, too crazy of a, <laughs> of a detour, I guess, in my life. <laughs> um, and then as far as the, the colors, so purple represents um, spirit and um, 
Blue rep represents art and harmony. Green represents nature. Yellow represents the sun. Orange represents healing. And then red represents life. And as I said, there used to be more colors to the flag, um, but I believe that when making the flag, they actually ran out of the other, other colors to sew together, like fabric, fabric wise. So they ended up just reducing it to these colors. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah, I love, I absolutely love like the many different variations of flags um, that have come out over the past few years, because as all of you guys know, or most of you guys know, there are many, um, there are many, <laughs> many, uh, many different types of uh, identi identities um, within the LGBTQIA plus community. So there are tons of flags now to represent those different like sub communities um, of people. So yeah, just keep that in mind when making these rainbows, you could absolutely do any kind of color variations that you want later on down the line. This is just a really great way to start out so that you understand um, you know, like the basics that you need, you know, like the extruder um, and, you know, just, or even just like rolling it out, which is the method I'm gonna show you guys right now. If you don't have a clay extruder, if you don't have this crank one, or if you don't have the manual push one, you could also just use your finger. Okay, we're gonna take it back to preschool arts and crafts here. So this is the one made with the extruder. I'm gonna set this aside here or you can use your finger. You're gonna pinch one end, not like hard, but go ahead and hold on to one end and you're gonna just roll, 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 roll that out. And as you're rolling, you're gonna kind of drift your finger to the right. So you're gonna roll that out. And then I totally forgot to mention this tool. I'm so sorry, guys, but this is a clay cutter. This is also very, very important for this project. So you're gonna go ahead and chop that off. Shoot, okay. So you have that little piece for your rainbow and then you can go ahead and roll that out again. Roll that out, roll that out. And you want it about the same, same length. And cut that. All right, so those colors are done, or sorry, that color is done. So next we're gonna go ahead and do blue. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and get your clay gun ready or your extruder ready or get your finger ready. Now that I've shown you guys the three different options, go with which, whichever one you have access to right now. So we're gonna go ahead and load our clay gun or get our finger prepared or the other clay gun. Go ahead and put that circular attachment on. Screw that lid on and then start cranking away. Hey Deja, we got another question. All right. Um, so since you started in a different craft field, how did you go about learning to make earrings? Um, let's see. It was honestly, <laughs> it was probably one of the most random things I've ever done in my life. And I'm pretty sure all of us can relate to this statement <laughs> that the, that last year's events kind of, you know, um, pushed us outside of our comfort zone and pushed us to try new things and um, adopt a different mindset. Um, and that's pretty much what happened um, with me. I, <laughs> uh, my jewelry business actually started with orange earrings, like real fruit oranges. I was literally eating an orange one day and sliced it up and decided to throw a couple of slices in an air fryer. And I was like, hmm, these would be really cute as earrings. And so <laughs> I had to figure out what exactly I needed to turn them into earrings. And 
went to the craft store, got some eye pins, got some some uh, <laughs> some earring hooks, and you know, I just I turned them into earrings, listed it, and it was pretty much pretty much up from there. Um, and as far as polymer clay, I didn't get into working with clay until I'd say maybe mm, like two months after I started my business. So <laughs> yeah, it's been a really interesting journey. Um, it, it, I've just been going with the flow of it, <laughs> I guess is, is how, I, how I can answer that, that question. Um, I started off with the fruit earrings and then I went to um, resin, making resin crafts. And then I realized that I wanted to start making food out of clay. <laughs> And I started making my food, my first clay items. Um, I think the very first thing I made were egg clay clay earrings, and I just recently made successfully. I'll add successfully made um, my first pair of bacon earrings. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's been an amazing journey. But polymer clay definitely has my heart um, in terms of jewelry making itself. I've done some beadwork. It's not really my thing, um, but polymer clay is definitely there. It's just endless. I mean, endless, endless possibilities. You can create whatever, whatever you want, you know. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and load that green clay. Go ahead and put that attachment on. And again, if you're using your finger to roll out the clay, that is also a really, really great um, alternative. And I highly recommend that method. Um, if you are super duper new, um, or if you're under the age of like 16, 17, it just might be a little bit easier um, for you to do because the clay extruders, they just kind of require a little, a little bit of muscle, um, especially if you are gonna use the manual one. So rolling it out is totally a great method. Um, and it's a great way to kind of like save on, <laughs> on clay waste, you know, not that you should be wasting any clay anyway, right? You know, but uh, um, sometimes you may not use this much clay even, depending on how many earrings you're making. So there we go, there's the green strand. <laughs> Someone said it looks like spaghetti. It does, right? It absolutely does. <laughs> That's why it's so much fun. Like when, whenever you're working with polymer clay, it's so similar to like if you're baking and if you're like kneading dough and, you know, working with like fondant or something like that, if you guys are into, <laughs> into making cakes and stuff like that, um, it's very similar. It's very similar. So if you enjoy those kind of activities, then I think you would really enjoy polymer clay. Okay, so we're getting that excess out. Go ahead and wipe your clay extruder or wipe your hands if you're using your fingers. Go ahead and wind that back. Okay, up next we have yellow, which again is representing the sun. Let's crank that back a little bit. Okay, that attachment goes on. Screw that on and crank away. Now I'm actually gonna make a little bit of room on my workspace here for the other colors by moving these over here. Okay. Go 
ahead and crank that yellow out. Again, you're gonna go ahead and pinch that off. Set that aside over here. Go ahead and wind that extruder back. Screw that. Again, if it's messy, go ahead and you can roll it off if you don't just have like an extra cloth or something. Um, but I would highly recommend like maybe using a paper towel or um, some sort of tissue paper to go ahead and clean off your extruder and the attachment in between use. That way the color does not transfer to the other colors. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this yellow out. By the way, um, if you are finding that you do have excess clay in your extruder like this, like if you determine like, okay, that's enough of a, of a spaghetti string. <laughs> for my earring, um, then you can always just roll that back in a ball and put that back um, in the package or store it in the same package as the uh, yellow color that you got it from or the clay package that you got it from rather. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this off. and wind that back again. I guess I've become like an expert at doing this because when I was first cranking it back, I used to be so slow, like, ah, oh, this is gonna take forever. But <laughs> the faster you go to wind it up, the better. Go ahead and wind that up. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our orange in to represent healing. Okay. And go ahead and crank that out. Every time I say crank that, I'm resist resisting the urge to reference that one song that I'm pretty sure we all know. <laughs> from uh, our middle school years, if we're 25 years plus, right? So go ahead and crank that out, pinch it off, ba bam Go ahead and set that aside. Hey, Deja, we have a question. Okay. What will the end result look like? Can we see the... Yeah. So the end, area? yes. Go ahead and switch to the front view. I'll go ahead and show you guys the earrings that I'm wearing currently are the, the rainbow earrings that we are currently making. This will be the end result. Super, super lovely, they're super lightweight. Um, and like I said, you can do these in many different variations to fit any LGBTQIA plus flag. Um, so this is what we're aiming for. This is precisely what we're aiming for. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and do that last color. Okay, and wind it up, wind it up. And like I said, you don't have to use this much clay. Um, I'm mainly doing this so that you guys can get an idea of like the shape that has to go inside of the extruder. Okay, go ahead and wind that back. And the attachment goes on. All right. Okay, and go ahead and crank that red out. All 
All right, and then pinch it off. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and set this extruder to the side. And we're gonna get started on actually making the rainbow shape. All right, so I have all of my colors set aside here. Go ahead and show you guys, I have all my colors over there. Oops. There we go. All right, so we're gonna start with purple. Like I said, we're gonna go ahead and work backwards. All right, now what you're gonna wanna do, what I highly recommend actually is, is going ahead and uh, grabbing your parchment paper and setting that up on your workspace. So you have your strands over there to the side. Go ahead and get your parchment paper on top of your workspace. Just gonna make transferring it to the oven a little bit easier. We're gonna grab that purple strand, okay? You're gonna make a U shape. Make a nice little U shape. Now, the size of the U is going to determine how big the actual earring is. It's gonna determine the weight of the earring, all of that. So make sure you um, keep that in mind when setting up your U, okay? Try to get it as neat as you possibly can. And then it's okay if this strand just kind of hangs out over here, okay? All right, so we got a nice U there. You're going to lightly, and I mean very lightly, just kind of tap, tap that clay down so that it kind of sticks to the paper a little bit, but you don't want to press it down to where it flattens it. Up next, we have blue. I'm gonna go ahead and put that around that first U, make a blue U, and you're going to lightly, very, very lightly tap those together just to secure it, all right? Let those other strands just kind of hang out down there. Okay, up next we have green. Our nature strand. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and create a U with that green. Okay, and then like I said, lightly tap, 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 tap. Then up next we have yellow, representing the sun. Go ahead and make that U shape and tap, tap, tap those together. Okay, and then we have an orange little strand here representing healing. By the way, if I am going a little bit too fast, um, this live stream is being recorded and it will be up on the Michael's YouTube. Um, if you guys want to watch that, and just kind of pause as you go. So then that way you're not missing any steps. And then last but not least, we have our red representing life. Okay, and go ahead and tap those together. Now, here's a little polymer clay hack. If you're finding that you're getting fingerprints imprinted onto your clay, you can use your finger to smooth it out a little bit. Just lightly kind of rub it and then it'll smooth out those um, 
those fingerprints. Or another hack is using rubbing alcohol and a little Q-tip. You could just rub that lightly on top and it'll take out those, those fingerprints in no time. Okay, so there's our rainbow. Now you're going to need the clay cutter, the wonderful clay cutter that I totally forgot to mention in the beginning. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. This is a very important tool for this project. So clay cutter, okay, you're gonna grab on both ends. Please be very careful, careful with this clay cutter because it is very sharp. Um, you're gonna go ahead and cut straight across. Zoop. Okay. And there we have our rainbow earring. Okay. There's a little bit of excess. Now, for those of you guys who are like true crafters and artists, you don't have to throw this away. This is a little bit harder to recycle just because you'd have to pick apart every little piece and then restore it. So you can actually make, <clears throat> sorry, my voice. You could actually make this into an earring itself. You could make this into a stud earring if you'd like um, by putting a, uh, an earring post attachment to the back. You could also find those at Michael's Craft Store. And you just glue it right back on there and ba-bam. Or you can close it up like that and make it into something else. I mean, <laughs> the possibilities are endless, but it is very important to hold on to your clay um, excess because you can turn that into a ton of different fun projects. Okay, so what I did over here is the same thing you're going to do to make your second earring. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate how to prep this to get into the oven. All right, so we're gonna take an eye pin screw, which is this little guy here. Cute little eye pin screw. Now you could either use your fingers to go ahead and push that into the, into the unbaked clay, or you can use your different um, pliers to kind of wedge that in there. I'm gonna go ahead and use my fingers. Okay. So I'm actually going to insert this into my polymer clay um, to make like a T or a cross rather. So um, I'll go ahead and insert the eye pin this way instead of flat like this. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to be a very, very careful because it can bend the clay. Go ahead and push that into the top. Okay, so there's your rainbow. You're gonna go ahead and put this into the oven. Like I said, you should have preheated it to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. You're gonna go ahead and pop this into the oven for 15 minutes. So go ahead and put that on your baking sheet or sorry, your cookie pan and pop that in the oven for 15 minutes. Okay. And when it comes out, it should look like this. All right. Sorry, give me one second. So when it comes out of the oven, both of your earrings should look like this. Okay, got my eye pin screws in there. They're nice and secure. It's baked. You guys can kind of hear maybe it's hard. After 15 minutes, it's good to go. I'll go ahead and wait for you guys to catch up a little bit and I'll show a couple of variations of this flag. Um, just because I know that there's a lot more, um, there's a lot more variations and it is important to, um, to acknowledge the, the different representation within the community. Um, for example, we have Ace Pride rainbow earrings. So you can make this version, you would just get these color, the, uh, this uh, color scheme of um, 
polymer clay. All of these colors are also available at Michael's. And I highly recommend the Craft Smart brand. It's really good. The clay is perfectly soft, easy to work with. Okay, and then we also have the Trans Pride flag colors. So you can absolutely switch up the variations if you wish. Um, this is just the traditional slash classic uh, Rainbow Pride colors. So you're more than welcome to try any of those. All right. We got a question. Okay. Um, do you need to cover the clay when you put it in the oven? No, so you do not need to cover the clay at all when you put it into the oven. You would just put them right on the sheet, like so. Put that on top of a baking pan and then just slide it on in there. I highly recommend putting it on the top row just because you don't wanna accidentally burn your clay. Um, top or middle rack is good, just definitely not the bottom. <laughs> but yeah, no, you do not need to cover it at all. Okay, so once that's done and out of the oven, we're gonna go ahead and grab our jump rings, which are these two babies right here. You're gonna grab two different pliers. I highly recommend the flat nose and the bent nose plier, okay. You're gonna pick up that jump ring, grab hold of it. Okay, and then you're gonna go ahead and use that flat nose plier to open that jump ring, just slightly. Open it a little bit. Okay, and then you're gonna go ahead and loop that through that eye screw. And then you're gonna go ahead and grab your eye hook right here and you're gonna loop that jump ring through the eye hook. Take your flat head pliers and then go ahead and close that jump ring. It's a little tricky sometimes. Okay. And then the bam, we have a rainbow earring there. We'll do the same over here. Go ahead and pick up that jump ring. Okay. If you need to reposition it a little bit, just go ahead and pick it up, reposition it in that nose, the bent nose um, plier. And then again, you're gonna go ahead and hook that through that eye screw and get that earring hook, loop that through that hole right there. Okay, get your flat nose plier and go ahead and close that off. Okay. And then if you have to make little adjustments, it kind of happens from time to time. Sometimes um, the eye hooks, they don't come closed completely. So if that is the case, you can just kind of use your pliers to make those little adjustments. It's always great to have um, at least two, two of them in hand so that you're kind of using them as like your nails, I guess, in a way, if you don't have nails to just go ahead and close things up, tweak it a little bit, twist it. Okay. And there we have it, you guys. There are your classic rainbow polymer clay earrings. These should be super duper lightweight, so fun to wear. For those of you guys who are going to Pride, depending on where you are, I don't know if it's happening in some areas, but here in California, we are still doing Pride. Um, if you need something fun to wear, hey, now you know how to make your own rainbow earrings and you could even say, I made these, right? So super duper cute, super easy to make. Um, if you guys have any more questions, please feel free to 
um, let me know. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. And I'll go ahead and show you guys. I'm gonna take the ones that I have on currently off so I can show you these. We could go ahead and switch to the front view camera. All right. So there we go. We now have our rainbow pride earrings, classic color rainbow pride earrings, right? Can go ahead and pop those in. They should be totally fine to wear after you bake them, like I said, for 15 minutes at 275 degrees. And you're good to go. You're good to go. You can wear these absolutely anywhere. Not saying you just have to wear these at the pride parade or pride event, right? Um, they're just super duper fun, super lightweight. Like I said, you can do these in many, many different fun variations. Um, yeah, <laughs> so uh, are there any more questions? Do you guys have any more questions? Either on the Facebook Live or on this live? Where can we find you on social media? So. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Miss My Match. That's M I S S M Y M A T C H. Um, yeah, I would love it if you guys would show me your creations and go ahead and tag me on my Instagram at Miss My Match. Um, also, be sure to tag Michael's Craft Stores on Instagram and make sure you hashtag Make It With Michael's. Um, so then that way, all of us within the crafting community can admire the beautiful creations that you guys have made in today's class. Um, and yeah, we can support you. <laughs> For those of you guys who are looking to start your own business or start your own brand or, you know, whatever the case may be, or if you just want to create for fun, um, I highly recommend taking more classes from the Michaels website. They have tons of different fun online classes, everything from like crocheting to, you know, like working with your cricket makers and stuff that you could also find at, at um, you could also find at Michael's Craft Store. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, the possibilities are absolutely endless and I highly encourage you guys to keep on creating and keep crafting. Um, Anybody can create. I fully believe that we are put on this earth to create. We are creative by nature. So keep on crafting, keep on creating. And um, again, I'm super duper honored to be here, especially for Pride Month and to represent not only, <laughs> not only the LGBTQIA plus community, but the BIPOC community and artists. 10-year-old um, me would be so proud right now. So <laughs> I really, really appreciate all of you guys for joining and um, crafting with me. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so if you, guys, if you guys have any more questions, we have a few more um, minutes here. Uh, if you guys missed it, um, I talked about the different color variations um, and the meaning of each color in the rainbow flag. Um, I'll actually go over that one more time, just in case anyone missed it, if you can go ahead and go over to the bird's eye view. Sure, and we also have another question. When do you put the glaze on? When do you put the glaze on? So the glaze is completely optional. Um, I personally prefer a matte look, which is what you're looking at right now. Um, now, you could use the Sculpey glaze or Sculpey gloss glaze. They have two different finishes. They have a satin finish and then they also have a gloss finish. This one is the gloss finish. Super duper great if you do want that kind of uh, like glossy glass kind of look to your earrings. Um, and this goes with absolutely anything that you make um, with polymer clay. Um, so you would do this at the very end after you um, after you bake off your, your uh, your polymer clay creation, you would take a little paintbrush and just kind of maybe like open this and pour it onto your surface, your workspace. Just maybe a couple of drops like onto your workspace, take that brush and you would dip it and then finish it off. Now that's completely optional, absolutely optional. I personally don't do that to majority of my, um, majority of my uh, creations. 
Um, I'd like to mention another alternative to this, to this finish, because a lot of people, they go to, um, they get this to protect their creations in a way. And <clears throat> in my experience, it doesn't necessarily do that. It will just kind of give you a finish. Um, now, if you're wanting to protect your actual creation, I highly recommend getting UV resin, which is also available at Michael's, and then getting a UV lamp, which is also available at Michael's. Um, and you would basically do the same as you would with this gloss glaze, and you'd get a little paintbrush, paint that on top, right? And then you'd use the UV light to go ahead and cure that, and then it gives you a very glossy um, finish. But with this in particular, I wouldn't recommend it for the rainbow earrings just because it is a little bit uh, difficult to get it um, into the cracks where it doesn't, you know, like form some sort of bubble. Um, so yeah, this is totally optional. If you do wanna go for more of a glossy finish, then yes, I would say go ahead and put this at the very end after it's done make baking, after it's done cooling for a little bit. Um, but we will not be doing that for this project. Like I said, both of these, the bacon bond and the gloss are, um, these are totally optional. Uh, the bacon bond, it just, it's a little bit uh, more secure for your eye pin screws. If you're making these for, uh, I'd say like if you're like a business owner or something like that, and you're sending these out to clients and you know they're gonna wear it more long-term, then I would highly recommend the bacon, bacon bond adhesive um, where you would dip that, um, you would dip your eye pin screw into it before sticking it into the clay. So then that way, when it bakes off, it kind of like acts as like a really, really strong glue to keep that inside no matter what, okay? But these are totally optional, like I said, especially if you're gonna be doing this on a professional scale, then there are tons of different methods to do these earrings. Um, I'm just showing you guys the easiest way um, to do them and have fun with it. You know, if you just need a quick project um, or you have an event coming up and you wanna make your own rainbow earrings, this is fantastic. Um, but again, like these are really, really great if you want that professional finish um, to your product. And were there any other questions? I think I saw one more that popped up. Yes, we do have another question. Um, someone asked, do you, does the, does the does the clay chip over time? And is there anything that they need to do to care for the earrings? Um, does the clay chip over time? Um, not on its own, I'll say. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. My camera went out for a second. Um, they won't chip on their own. Um, just like with anything that you would wear, you know, wear and tear does happen. Um, I would say the best way possible to protect these specific earrings would be UV resin. That's just kind of like the best, the best of the best in terms of, you know, keeping it from chipping or um, scratching, you know, anything like that coming apart. Um, I would say UV resin is definitely the way to go. And like I said, that is available at, at Michael's um, and it is available in store, in most stores, majority of stores now, which is absolutely amazing. Um, since more people are getting into resin work, it's just really, really awesome, very accessible. So um, I would say that that's the best way to keep it from chipping. Otherwise, you are going to get some wear and tear over time, just kind of naturally. And then um, was there anything else? Any more questions that any of you guys have? That's all I see on my end. All right. <laughs> All right, well, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and switch over to the front camera. All righty, guys, I'll go ahead and put my rainbow earrings on. If anyone is making the rainbow earrings right now and you would like for me to see them, um, you can go ahead and turn your camera on and show them off to me if you would like. Um, if you're a little shy, that's okay. Or if you are going to make them uh, at a later date, that is totally fine too. I would love to see them. Go ahead and tag me, like I said, um, at Miss My Match on Instagram. I'm also on TikTok at Miss My Match. Um, and then be sure to also tag Michael's Craft Stores on both Instagram and TikTok and hashtag Make It With Michael's. 
Um, <laughs> this has been really an amazing class and um, I thank you guys. I thank the Michaels team um, for having me on board for such an amazing product project. Like I said, it really does mean so much to me um, and you know, to be out and to be proud and, you know, just very, I'm very, very comfortable and very um, accepting of myself as a person of the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, and I encourage all of you to feel very validated in your own self um, and <laughs> just be true and be you. I know that it's very difficult to get support um, sometimes. I completely understand that. Um, but I strongly encourage all of you guys to just, like I said, just be true, be you, and, you know, just continue to, um, I don't know, be your very best self, like, no matter what. <laughs> you, you are the only person who needs to validate yourself. Um, so I send you guys so much love. I send you guys a hug. Um, I know that many of you guys, especially within the community, really need that love and support. Just know that I'm sending it to you through the ether. Um, I wrap my arms around you and I send you so much love and support and encouragement on your journey in life, period. Okay. Keep on creating, keep on being brave, keep on being strong and uh, yeah, just keep on being amazing guys. <laughs> this go, this is going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and uh, conclude the class here. And um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Like I said, go ahead and tag me, tag Michaels. Hashtag make it with Michaels. Um, I'd love to see your creations. I'll be commenting on people's pictures if you did make your earrings today. Um, so yeah, please feel free to share with me. I'd love to see it. Peace and love guys. <laughs>